TikTokers, the vibrant and creative individuals who captivate millions with their short videos, have become the target of ruthless cartels. This unimaginable reality has reverberated through the online community, as these executions are not only carried out with brutal precision, but also captured on camera for the world to witness. In this gripping video, we delve into the disturbing world where TikTokers find themselves in the crosshairs of dangerous criminal organizations. TikTok Narco Queen. Born into a family of nine siblings, Sabrina, also known as Ina, grew up surrounded by drugs. Court documents cited by local media reveal that she was introduced to the drug trade at a young age, becoming involved in illicit activities as a teenager. Sabrina Duran Montero was not just your average influencer. Behind the scenes, she was running a powerful cartel gang in Chile alongside her brothers. But on the surface, her TikTok account, under the name Katrina Guzman, showcased a seemingly innocent side of her life. She would captivate her audience with videos of her dancing, lip-syncing to popular tunes, and sharing fashion tips. Little did her fans know the dangerous double life she was leading. For over a year and a half, Sabrina consistently posted TikToks, gaining a substantial following of around 600,000 loyal fans. But suddenly, she went silent. The reason behind her sudden disappearance was the escalating violence in her community, which had caught the attention of the Chilean police. Her neighbors, tired of the constant shootings and fear that plagued their lives, began recording videos as evidence. The Chilean drug enforcers, known as the DPI, took no notice of the mounting evidence against Narco Queen and her cartel gang. In a bold move, they created a website where people could anonymously report crimes and submit evidence. The floodgates opened and the website was inundated with videos showcasing gunshots, individuals brandishing weapons, and suspicious activities in and around Narco Queen's compound. With an overwhelming amount of evidence in their possession, the DPI decided it was time to take action. They planned a raid on Narco Queen's house, aiming to dismantle the cartel and and bring Sabrina and her brothers to justice. The raid was executed with precision as law enforcement officials stormed the compound, determined to put an end to the reign of the narco queen. As the authorities closed in, Sabrina and her brothers found themselves trapped, but they were not willing to go down without a fight. In a daring attempt to escape, they made a desperate leap out of a window, hoping to evade capture. The dramatic scene unfolded as Sabrina, with her heart pounding, jumped out of the window, followed closely by her brothers. They sprinted through the compound, desperately trying to outrun the pursuing police. However, their freedom was short-lived. The Chilean police, relentless in their pursuit, quickly closed in on the fleeing trio. Sabrina and her brothers were apprehended, and their dreams of escape were shattered. The authorities wasted no time in bringing them to justice, and they were swiftly sentenced to a year in prison. While behind bars, Sabrina's TikTok presence did not waver. It was a baffling sight to see her posting videos from prison, seemingly unfazed by her circumstances. The Chilean prison system, shrouded in mystery, allowed her access to the internet, street clothing, and even amenities like a TV or computer. She continued to share glimpses of her life behind bars, showcasing the unexpected realities of the prison experience. But amidst the harsh prison walls, Sabrina's life took an unexpected turn. She crossed paths with a fellow inmate named Antonella, and a deep connection formed between them. Antonella, like Sabrina, was a leader of a cartel in Chile. Their shared background and experiences brought them closer, and they soon found solace in each other's company. Love blossomed within the confines of their prison cells, defying all odds. As Sabrina's release date approached, she eagerly anticipated her freedom. However, Antonella's fate remained uncertain, as she was still serving her sentence. But their love proved resilient, and even after Sabrina's release, their relationship continued. Sabrina made it clear through her TikTok posts that Antonella still held a special place in her heart. She tagged Antonella in every video, shared pictures of them together, and spoke of their love openly. With her freedom regained, Sabrina returned to creating her regular TikTok content. She resumed her role as a beauty influencer, sharing tips, reviews, and showcasing her fashion sense. Her loyal followers, unaware of the dangers that lurked in her past, continued to support her, leaving comments of admiration and encouragement. As Sabrina's popularity on TikTok soared, her followers remained oblivious to the dangerous world she inhabited. They continued to shower her with admiration and support, unaware of the risks she faced. But fate had a tragic twist in store for Sabrina 
one that would shatter the dreams of a future with Antonella. On a seemingly ordinary day, Sabrina set out for a routine nail appointment. Little did she know that danger lurked around the corner. Rival gang members, possibly from a rival cartel, intercepted her car, bringing her world crashing down. In a chilling display of violence, they unleashed a barrage of bullets, determined to silence the narco queen once and for all. Sabrina, known for her resilience, stepped out of her car, ready to confront her attackers. But the assailants showed no mercy, firing multiple rounds at her. The shocking scene, captured on video, revealed the harrowing reality of her final moments. Despite her valiant efforts to rise, the attackers returned to ensure their mission was complete. Sabrina's life was tragically cut short, leaving her loved ones and fans in a state of shock and grief. The aftermath of Sabrina's death sent shockwaves through her community. Her funeral, held just a few days ago, was a sad affair, attended by a multitude of mourners. The police, faced with the daunting task of finding her killers, launched a thorough investigation. While they suspect the attack was orchestrated by a rival gang seeking revenge, the truth remains elusive. Antonella, still serving her sentence in prison, was left devastated by the loss of her beloved Sabrina. The depth of her grief and the impact of the tragedy on her life remain unknown as she has made no public statements. The world can only wonder about the pain she must endure, locked away behind prison walls. Sabrina's death serves as a chilling reminder of the dangers that lurk within the world of cartels and gangs. Her story, though shocking, is not an isolated incident. Influencers involved in such illicit activities have met similar fates in the past. The allure of fame and fortune can often lead down a treacherous path where violence and tragedy become all too common. Luis Lagunas Rosales. In the dusty streets of Sinaloa, a state known for its powerful drug cartels, a young boy named Juan Luis Lagunas Rosales was born. Growing up without a father, Lagunas was left in the care of his grandmother by his mother. Life was tough, but Lagunas had dreams of something bigger. At the age of 15, Lagunas made a bold decision. He left his hometown behind and moved to the bustling municipality of Culiacan, where he hoped to find a better life. With no high school diploma, Lagunas took up odd jobs, washing cars to make ends meet. It was in this adopted town that Lagunas would embark on a journey that would catapult him to internet stardom. He embraced the nickname El Pirata de Culiacan, or the Pirate of Culiacan, a moniker that would soon become known across cyberspace. Lagunas had a magnetic personality that attracted attention wherever he went. He started receiving invitations to parties, and his life took a wild turn. As the drinks flowed, Lagunas found himself falling deeper into a world of excessive drinking and debauchery. In a bid to capture these wild moments, Lagunas began posting videos on social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. His videos showed him chugging beer and bottles of whiskey, often pushing himself to the brink of unconsciousness. The shocking footage quickly went viral, captivating audiences around the world. In the years that followed, Lagunas became a perverse sensation on YouTube. His baby face, combined with his belligerent and clownish behavior, entertained the masses. But behind the facade of a carefree partygoer, Lagunas was still just a boy trying to find his place in the world. To appear older and more mature, Lagunas drew a beard on his chin and adorned his arms with tattoos. His Instagram feed became a gallery of provocative images featuring large guns, half-naked women, and luxury cars. Lagunas lived as if he were invincible, saying whatever he pleased about whomever he pleased. It was all part of the game, the party that never seemed to end. But little did Lagunas know that in the violent state of Sinaloa, no one is truly invincible, especially when you you mess with the wrong people. In one of his recent videos, Lagunas made a grave mistake. He directed derogatory remarks towards Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, also known as El Mencho, one of Mexico's most dangerous drug lords and the leader of the new generation cartel of Jalisco. Lagunas' insult caught the attention of authorities and put him on a collision course with a fate he could never have imagined. On a fateful night at a bar in Jalisco, armed individuals burst in and unleashed a hail of bullets upon Lagunas and his friends. The teenagers life was tragically cut short as he sustained between 15 and 18 bullet wounds. Authorities were able to identify Lagunas by his distinctive tattoos. The execution of Juan Luis. Lagunas Rosales shocked the world, shedding light on the dark underbelly of Mexico's drug trade. It serves as a stark reminder that even in the age of social media fame, crossing paths with dangerous individuals can have deadly consequences. The people responsible for this were the new generation cartel. Coalescing less than a decade ago, 
This cartel stemmed from the remnants of the Millennio Cartel and quickly established itself as a formidable player in the drug trade. At the helm of this ruthless organization stood Nemesio Ocheguera Cervantes, better known as El Mencho. According to US government officials, El Mencho is one of Mexico's most dangerous drug lords, feared by rivals and authorities alike. His leadership of the new generation cartel of Jalisco has propelled him to the top of the country's most wanted list. The new generation cartel operates through various criminal activities Activities, including the sale of firearms, gasoline theft, extortion, and kidnapping. It is one of the fastest rising drug cartels in Mexico, with operations spanning multiple states and even forging ties with criminal networks around the globe. El Mencho himself is a figure shrouded in mystery. Reports suggest that he was once a police officer, using his knowledge of law enforcement tactics to evade capture for years. His ability to adapt and outmaneuver authorities has made him a formidable adversary. The new generation cartel's rise to power has been accompanied by a wave of violence. Thousands of murders have been attributed to the cartel, with El Mencho often directly implicated in these heinous acts. His brutal tactics and iron-fisted control have instilled fear in those who dare to cross his path. Laguna's ill-fated decision to insult El Mencho in a recent video proved to be a grave mistake, while the identities and motives of the assailants who executed Laguna's remain unknown. Authorities are investigating a possible link to his videotaped insult towards El Mencho. Crossing paths with this notorious drug lord is a dangerous dangerous game, one that Laguna's tragically lost. As Laguna's life was cut short, Mexico was grappling with a surge in violence. The year of his death was on track to become the bloodiest on record, with an average of 69 murders per day in the first 10 months of 2017. Laguna's story serves as a stark reminder of the dangers that lurk in a country plagued by drug cartels and organized crime. Leslie Montenegro, Nana Pelucas. Next, we delve into the tragic execution of Leslie Montenegro, also known as Nana Pelucas, a fearless journalist, satirist, and social media commentator. It was a fateful evening on February 5, 2018, when Leslie Montenegro's life was brutally cut short. Two unidentified assailants carried out a brazen attack in the beachside resort city of Acapulco, Mexico. The location of the crime, a Todos Los Santos, a restaurant that Montenegro co-owned with her husband. Little did she know that this would be her final night. According to eyewitness accounts and initial police reports, the attack took place between 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. The restaurant was bustling with patrons enjoying their meals, unaware of the impending tragedy. Montenegro was seated with her husband, engrossed in conversation, when the two assailants entered the establishment. With cold determination, the assailants made their way towards Montenegro's table. Without uttering a single word, they unleashed a hail of bullets, targeting her face and abdomen. The sound of gunshots shattered the once lively atmosphere, leaving patrons in a state of shock and disbelief. As chaos erupted, the assailants swiftly fled the scene, leaving behind a trail of fear and confusion. Montenegro's lifeless body lay on the floor, her dreams and aspirations forever silenced. The restaurant, once a place of joy and camaraderie, became a haunting reminder of the dangers faced by those who dare to speak truth to power. Leslie Montenegro's murder sent shockwaves through the journalism community, raising questions about the state of press freedom and safety for for journalists in Mexico. As we dig deeper into this tragic event, it becomes evident that Montenegro's work as a journalist and her satirical YouTube channel, El Sillon TV, may have made her a target. Montenegro's online persona, La Nana Pelucas, captivated audiences with her sharp wit and fearless commentary. Through her satirical videos, she fearlessly covered local politics in Acapulco and the wider Guerrero region, often mocking local politicians and shedding light on their alleged wrongdoings. Her YouTube channel, El Sillon TV, became became a platform for truth-telling, exposing corruption and holding those in power accountable. Montenegro's biting humor and unwavering dedication to uncovering the truth made her a beloved figure among her followers, but also drew the ire of those who sought to silence her. In the months leading up to her murder, Montenegro had received threats, a chilling indication of the dangers she faced as a journalist. According to a statement by Guerrero State Attorney General Javier Olea, her publications had put her in the view of a local official. The nature of these threats remains unclear clear, but their impact on Montenegro's life cannot be understated. As we scoured through Montenegro's social media accounts and publications, it became apparent that she was unafraid to challenge the status quo. Her recent posts on El Sillon's Facebook page included critical commentary about Acapulco Mayor Evodio Velasquez and expressed support for candidates running in the July 2018 elections. However, it is important to note that CPJ was unable to find any recent stories on El Sillon, Montenegro's Facebook page, or videos on her YouTube channel that align 
aligned with the statements made by Javier Olea. This discrepancy raises questions about the motives behind Montenegro's murder and the true source of the threats she received. The investigation into Leslie Montenegro's murder took a chilling turn when Javier Olea revealed that Javi Daniel Cervantes Magno, the alleged leader of a local criminal gang in Acapulco, had ordered her execution. However, the whereabouts of Cervantes Magno remain unknown, leaving many unanswered questions. In a telephone conversation, Jose Antonio Rivera, a journalist from the region who knew her, well described Montenegro as well known for being very critical of local politicians and possessing a very sharp tongue. Rivera's words paint a picture of a journalist unafraid to challenge the powerful, even in the face of danger. Montenegro's commitment to exposing corruption and speaking truth to power made her a target for those who sought to maintain the status quo. The murder of Leslie Montenegro serves as a stark reminder of the dangers faced by journalists in Mexico, particularly those who dare to challenge the powerful and expose a corruption. The complete impunity surrounding her case raises concerns about the state of press freedom and the urgent need for justice. Prior to her tragic murder, Leslie Montenegro and her husband Samuel Munuzuri had been targeted by criminal gangs, leaving them in a constant state of fear and vulnerability. The threats they received were a chilling reminder of the risks associated with their work as journalists and their commitment to exposing corruption. On December 4th, 2016, the couple's lives took a terrifying turn when a series of narco mantas appeared around Acapulco. These banners, attributed to organized crime, contained explicit threats aimed at several individuals, including Montenegro and Munuzuri. The banners mentioned a Facebook page called Denuncias Acapulco Sin Sencura, which citizens could use to report crime, violence, corruption, and abuse of power by authorities. The banners alleged that Montenegro was one of the administrators of the Facebook page, implicating her in the fight against organized crime and corruption. The couple's dedication to shedding light on the dark underbelly of Acapulco made them targets for those who sought to maintain control and silence dissenting voices. Despite the threats they faced, Montenegro and Munuzuri remained steadfast in their pursuit of truth and justice. Montenegro, through her satirical YouTube channel and online news magazine, El Cilion, continued to expose the shortcomings of local politicians and shed light on the issues plaguing Acapulco. As we scoured through Montenegro's social media posts and publications, it became evident that she was unafraid to challenge the status quo. Her recent posts on El Cilion's Facebook page included critical commentary about Acapulco Mayor Evodio Velasquez and expressed support for candidates running in the July 2018 elections. However, it is important to note that CPJ was unable to find any recent stories on El Cilion, Montenegro's Facebook page, or videos on her YouTube channel that aligned with the statements made by Javier Olea, the Guerrero State Attorney General. This discrepancy raises questions about the motives behind Montenegro's murder and the true source of the threats she received. The threats faced by Montenegro and Munuzuri not only affected their personal lives, but also cast a shadow of fear over the entire journalism community in Acapulco. Miguel Angel Matamata, Mata, the president of the Journalists Club of Guerrero, criticized the statements made by Javier Olea, stating that they were rushed and lacked sufficient evidence. Matamata's Mata's comments highlight the need for a thorough investigation into the threats and incidents faced by Montenegro and her husband. The lack of clarity surrounding the nature and origin of the threats raises concerns about the level of impunity that exists in cases involving attacks on journalists. Despite the gravity of the threats they faced, Montenegro and Mujuzuri remained resilient in their pursuit of truth. Their commitment to journalism and their unwavering dedication to exposing corruption made them symbols of hope for many in Acapulco. As we continue to unravel the events leading up to Montenegro's murder, it becomes increasingly clear that her work as a journalist and her involvement in the fight against corruption made her a target for those who sought to maintain the status quo. La Flaca Jocelyn Alejandra. Nino, known by her alias La Flaca, was a young woman caught in the web of organized crime in Tamaulipas, Mexico. Born and raised in Mexico, La Flaca found herself drawn into the dangerous world of drug cartels at a young age. Her slim physique earned her the nickname La Flaca, which means the skinny one in English. This moniker not only referred to her physical appearance, but also had a deeper connection to the criminal underworld. In Mexico, organized crime groups often recruit women like La Flaca for their build and girly looks, using them as a disguise to deceive rival gangsters and law enforcement. These women, sometimes starting their criminal careers as lookouts or prostitutes, gradually climb the ranks to become foot soldiers in the cartels. La Flaca's journey into the dark world of the Gulf Cartel began when she caught the attention of its leaders. Her slim figure and youthful appearance made her an ideal candidate for their operations. As she proved her loyalty and dedication, she quickly rose through the ranks, becoming a trusted member of Los Ciclones, a subgroup with 
within the Gulf Cartel. It was on January 5, 2015, that La Flaca's life took an unexpected turn. An anonymous individual leaked a picture of her posing with a firearm on an organized crime leak page. The post quickly spread across social media platforms, thrusting La Flaca into the spotlight. The picture identified her as a member of the Gulf Cartel, based out of Rio Bravo, Tamaulipas. In the leaked picture, La Flaca can be seen smiling confidently in front of the camera, donning a bulletproof vest and resting her sunglasses on her head. A golden necklace adorns her neck, adding a touch of glamour to the otherwise grim image. The background of the picture sparked discussions and debates among social media users as it seemed to contradict the notion that those involved in organized crime live luxurious lives. The leaked picture of La Flaca went viral, garnering over 1,500 likes and more than 40 shares on Facebook alone. People were both fascinated and horrified by the image as it provided a glimpse into the dangerous and secretive world of the Gulf Cartel. Some questioned the risks that individuals like La Flaca take, while others pondered the stark contrast between the lifestyles of foot soldiers and the lavish lives reportedly enjoyed by the bosses of organized crime groups. As the picture circulated on social media, investigators began to suspect that the leak was orchestrated by Los Metros, a rival faction within the Gulf Cartel. Infighting between these factions had been escalating since the beginning of 2015. The leak was seen as a strategic move to weaken Los Ciclones and expose its members to public scrutiny. Throughout early 2015, members of the Gulf Cartel engaged in a social media war, leaking information about their rivals in an attempt to have them arrested by security forces or eliminated by rival gangsters. The leaders of Los Ciclones, including Angel Eduardo Prado Rodriguez, known as Ciclone 7, found themselves locked in a deadly battle with the suspected leaders of Los Metros, such as Jose Hugo Rodriguez Sanchez, Juan Manuel Loisa Salinas, and Juan Francisco Carrizales. La Flaca, under the command of Ciclone 7, played a crucial role in defending Rio Bravo, Tamaulipas, from incursions by Los Metros. The turf of Rio Bravo was predominantly controlled by Los Metros, making it a dangerous and high-risk area for Los Ciclones to operate in. La Flaca and her fellow foot soldiers fought relentlessly to protect their territory, engaging in violent clashes with rival gang members. However, the leaked picture of La Flaca ultimately proved to be a double-edged sword. While it brought her notoriety and attention, it also made her a target. Members of Los Metros identified her from the picture and began plotting her capture. Sometime between April 12th and 13th, 2015, Los Metros successfully captured La Flaca and two of her accomplices from Los Ciclones. The fate that awaited La Flaca was unimaginably gruesome. Mexican authorities made a chilling discovery on April 13, 2015, in Matamoros, Tamaulipas. La Flaca's dismembered body was found inside an ice cooler, abandoned at a Soriana parking lot. The scene was a horrifying sight, as investigators also uncovered the remains of another dismembered female and a decapitated man. Signs of torture indicated that they had been subjected to unimaginable violence before being executed and dismembered. The execution of La Flaca sent shockwaves through the criminal world and the public alike. The brutality of her demise served as a stark reminder of the ruthlessness and violence that permeate the Mexican drug cartels. It was a tragic end for a young woman caught in the crossfire of a deadly power struggle. On that fateful day, April 13, 2015, Mexican authorities in Matamoros, Tamaulipas, stumbled upon a scene of unimaginable horror. As they investigated a Soriana parking lot, they made a gruesome discovery. La Flaca's dismembered body inside an ice cooler. The sight was enough to send shivers down the spines of even the most hardened investigators. The ice cooler, abandoned at the parking lot, held not only La Flaca's remains, but also the dismembered body of another female and the decapitated body of a man. The level of violence inflicted upon them was evident, suggesting that they had endured unimaginable torture before meeting their untimely end. The investigation into the execution of La Flaca and the others revealed a chilling message left at the scene. It was a warning, a grim proclamation of the power dynamics within the criminal underworld. The message, written by the perpetrators, claimed that Los Metros, a rival faction within the Gulf Cartel, was responsible for the execution. It stated that anyone who supported Los Ciclones, La Flaca's faction, would meet a similar fate. The message left behind by the killers also criticized Los Ciclones for employing female foot soldiers, suggesting that they would continue to target and eliminate more people within their territory. The message was signed by a member of Los Metros known as Six 
1965, a chilling reminder of the individuals behind the ruthless violence that plagued the region. The discovery of La Flaca's dismembered body and the accompanying message sent shockwaves through the criminal underworld and the public. It was a stark reminder of the brutal reality of the Mexican drug cartels, where violence and retribution are an everyday occurrence. The execution of La Flaca served as a chilling example of the consequences faced by those embroiled in the deadly power struggles within these criminal organizations. As news of La Flaca's execution spread, it ignited a wave of fear and uncertainty among those involved in the criminal underworld. The execution was a clear message, a demonstration of the ruthlessness and brutality that awaited those who dared to cross the cartels. It was a stark reminder that loyalty and betrayal could mean the difference between life and death. The aftermath of La Flaca's execution also revealed the deep-seated rivalries and conflicts within the Gulf Cartel. The ongoing war between Los Ciclones and Los Metros had claimed yet another victim, further fueling the cycle of violence and revenge. The execution of La Flaca was a grim testament to the lengths these factions would go to assert their dominance and eliminate their rivals. The impact of La Flaca's execution extended beyond the criminal underworld. It served as a stark reminder of the challenges faced by law enforcement agencies in combating the drug cartel's reign of terror. The discovery of her dismembered body highlighted the need for increased efforts to dismantle these criminal organizations and bring those responsible for such heinous acts to justice. The execution of La Flaca left a void in the lives of those who knew her, a void that could never be filled. Her tragic demise served as a somber reminder of the human cost of the drug war and the devastating consequences it has on individuals and communities. That brings us to the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed it. For more videos like this, click on the cards on your screen.